Good afternoon and welcome to the Vigil Mass for the Solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Today's Mass intention is for the parishioners of St. Francis Xavier Church. I invite you now to stand and to join me in singing our opening hymn, which is in the uh, Gather Hymnal, number 783, Immaculate Mary.
A reading from the first book of Chronicles. David assembled all Israel in Jerusalem to bring the ark of the Lord to the place that he had prepared for it. David also called together the sons of Aaron and the Levites. The Levites bore the ark of God on their shoulders with poles, as Moses had ordained according to the word of the Lord. David commanded the chiefs of the Levites to appoint their kinsmen as chanters, to play on musical instruments, harps, lyres, and cymbals, to make a loud sound of rejoicing. They brought in the ark of God and set it within the tent, which David had pitched for it. Then they offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings to God. When David had finished offering up the burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial hymn, Lord, go up to the place of your rest, you and the ark of your holiness. Lord, go up to the place, place of your rest, you in the ark of your holiness. Behold, we heard of it in Ephraim. We found it in the fields of Ja'ar. Let us enter into his dwelling. Let us worship at his footstool. Lord, go up to the place of your rest, you in the ark of your holiness. May your priests be clothed with justice, let your faithful ones shout merrily for joy. For the sake of David, your servant, reject not the plea of your anointed. Lord, go up to the place of your rest, you in the ark of your holiness. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He prefers her for his dwelling. Zion is my resting place forever. In her will I dwell, for I prefer her. Lord, go up to the place of your rest, you the ark of your holiness. Our second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when that which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While Jesus was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breasts at which you nursed. He replied, Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. The Gospel of the Lord. I have uh, enjoyed looking at uh, the internet to see artists' depictions of what the Ark of the Covenant in the time of uh, Moses and David may have looked like. And there's some really beautiful renditions of this in which artists have tried to read all of the specifications in the books of Exodus and other Old Testament books, listen to the materials that we used, 
and uh, try to recreate what this Ark of the Covenant, which was a chest made out of wood, but covered with gold and jewels. And this is what the people of ancient Israel carried around with them. They would have two poles on each side, and there would be two pole bearers, so four all together, and they would carry it around in procession for special events. And what in the world were they carrying inside of the ark? Anybody know? The tablets, right, of the Ten Commandments, as well as a couple of other things. But that was the most sacred artifact that God had given the people of Israel at that point in time. Tablets inscribed by God's own finger. And so this was so precious to the people, they knew they had to have a special place to store it and to display it, and they carried it around in procession. And we heard there were musical instruments and all kinds of wonderful things to announce the Ark of the Covenant has arrived, right? And for those of you, I've mentioned this before at Daily Mass, for those of you who are fans of the series of Raiders of the Lost Ark, you now know what they were looking for. That Ark that contained, that, that chest that contained the Ten Commandments. So why in the world do we have a reading devoted to the Ark of the Covenant on the Feast of the Assumption of Mary? Because from the very early church, the church fathers looked at Mary and they said, well, just as that wooden chest, gold-plated, carried around this precious artifact of God, these precious commandments of God on stone, well, Mary carried in her body the most precious of all gifts of God, the gift of his own son, Jesus Christ. So the church fathers said, ah, she is the new Ark of the Covenant. And that is one of the reasons why Mary has such honor in our church, because she carried Jesus in her body. Now, when we come to, as modern day Christians, after the time of Jesus, we come into this temple that we call the church, and we have behind me on the altar this gold box, which we call a tabernacle, which comes from the Hebrew word meaning tent. So originally this was uh, considered to be a moving object, but now it is stationary. And that contains the reserved host, which is Jesus. So now in the church, we have this very sacred place where Jesus is contained in the Eucharist. But of course, we are the ones who receive the Eucharist. We receive the body and blood of Jesus into ourselves. So guess what? Guess who's also part of the Ark of the Covenant by virtue of baptism, by virtue of receiving Holy Communion? It's all of you and it's me. We now carry the body of Jesus within us. What a responsibility. What a privilege to carry Jesus within us. He lives in us through the power of his Holy Spirit by the sacrament of baptism. When we receive him at Mass and Holy Communion, he lives in us body, blood, soul, and divinity. Now I want to ask you this question. Would you rather have been around in a time where they carried around a chest with the stone commandments? Or do you rather have the fact that we have Jesus now present, not only in our tabernacle, but in each of us? I'll vote for part two. We have a blessing that the people of the time of Moses and David could never have imagined. And it is this incredible gift that we have as Catholics. And it's something that's so great to get what is distinguishes us from other Christian religions which have the word of God and have many of the truths of our faith. But many of them do not believe as we do that this is truly the body of Jesus. And we take it on the word of his testimony at the Last Supper when he changed the Passover meal into a Eucharistic meal. This is my body. This is my blood. From now on, you have the perpetual gift of me.
Now, of course, as I mentioned, it's a tremendous privilege, but it's also a responsibility. Because in the gospel today, we hear some of the people who knew Jesus' mama, Mary, coming around and trying to flatter her and praise her and exalt her by telling Jesus, blessed is the womb that carried you. Well, that part's true. Blessed are the breasts at which you nurse. That part is also true. But Jesus doesn't say that. Listen to what he says. Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. And who was exemplary at hearing the word of God and observing it? Well, of course, it was his mother Mary. She's the premier person who heard the word of God and received it and lived it. Beginning from the moment of the angel's proposition to her, you are to become the mother of the Savior of the world. And with questions, Mary still said yes. But she didn't just do that one time. She did that every day for the rest of her life. She was faithful to God. So she not only carried Jesus into this world, but she carried Jesus in her heart throughout her life. And once Jesus ascended into heaven and the celebration of the Mass began, Mary, like us, when she went to Mass with the apostles, with the early Christian disciples, she received the body of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. You're doing the same thing today that Mary did. The same privilege and the same gift from God. And, and isn't this awesome? And isn't it amazing? And what we hear in today's uh, celebration is that when we have lived a life of receiving Jesus and carrying Jesus around as arcs of the covenant, when we've done that faithfully, then at the end, there's no reason to be separated from God in our life for even a moment. At the end of our lives, for all of us, for almost all of us, at the moment of death, our bodies and souls, because we are body-soul composites, our bodies and souls will separate. Our souls will go on to eternal life. Our bodies will go, if you have enough money, to Metairie Lake Lawn Cemetery. <laughs> if not, you go to some other place, right? But our bodies and our souls will separate. But it is God's plan that at the end of all time, there will be a resurrection of the bodies and God will knit back together the ashes and the crushed bones and the uh, disintegrated skin. It will be, it's beyond our imagination what God will do. The only promise we have is that we will live one at one time at the end with our bodies and souls reunited as right now we know Jesus is in heaven with the body and soul. And Mary is in heaven with the body and soul. We know those two for sure. Those are the only two we know for sure. Some theologians speculate there could be other sanctified people like St. Joseph, maybe St. John the Baptist, but the church has never said that. But we know Jesus and Mary are there, so they, they paved the way for us. They show us what it's going to be like in the end. So here's my final question for you to ponder today. I think those of us who are in church today are hoping at the end of our lives to be in the place we call heaven. Heaven being the eternal marriage and union with God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in the company of Mary and all the saints. So I want to ask you, where is that going to be? Where is heaven? Is it outside this, uh, I think I read, 92 trillion mile wide universe, 92 trillion mile light year wide universe, which continues to expand? Is it outside of that? Or is it a dimension of existence right here with us that we're just not able to see? Our, we have these uh, smoke colored glasses on. Because our church teaches that when we celebrate the Mass, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are here. Blessed Mother Mary is here. The angels and the saints are here. 
our deceased loved ones who've been faithful to God and are in heaven are here. We just can't touch them, though we want to. They're here. And I will bet that most people in church today have had some kind of experience of someone who has died, some sense of their presence, some little thing that happened that let you know, well, they're right here. So heaven might be right here, and we just can't see it. But Mary tells us that if we're faithful to God, we will be in heaven in the end. She is the one purely human person we know. Human on the side of her mom and her dad, the one purely human person we know who's in heaven, body and soul. She's paved the way for us. That's our goal. That's our destination. We're called to be saints so we can be there. And we thank God for giving us this wonderful woman who was the Ark of the Covenant, carrying Jesus in her body, and shows us by her life and her faithfulness how we can be those Arks carrying around the living presence of God within us. Mary, Blessed Virgin Mary of the Assumption, please pray for us that we may be faithful to the call to bear Jesus in our world and to one day be saints in your company in heaven. Amen. Please stand and together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's great love for us, we bring our prayers and needs to God, our Heavenly Father. For the Church, may the Lord give us grace in being a people who follow His perfect will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government and community leaders, may the Lord guide them in the ways of servant leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the outcast, may God's mercy and healing bring them peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may the Lord fill us with love and truth and guide us in the ways of wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they, through the fullness of God's mercy, live with eternal joy in his presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our special intentions, We pray for peace in Ukraine, for an end to war, violence, and racism in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a pro-life culture in our world and a world that references the values of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us end now by praying together our family prayer, which may be found on the inside cover of your gathered heaven. 
loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of our Lady of Consacor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our Mother, and ask you to help us to battle today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may inform their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Kamsakor, peace to all of us. Mother Henry and Julia, pray for us that we may be a holy family. And let us invoke the prayers of Our Lady for our own conversion, for the conversion of our world, and for all the places in which our families and loved ones need God's grace and healing. Together we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. May you, O Lord, hear the prayers we have offered, which we make in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now as the ushers will take up a collection for the expenses and ministries of our church and as we prepare the altar for the sacred sacrifice. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, which we celebrate on the assumption of the Holy Mother of God, that it may lead us to your pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and an image of your church coming to perfection, and as a sure sign of hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body, she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with, with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have called us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his assisting bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take
as we do on the weekends, we will have uh, we will have we'll have actually a little different three stations for uh, Holy Communion, one in the middle, one on each side, and there will also be two cup ministers, one on each side. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. For anyone who needs uh, to know about tomorrow, we have Masses tomorrow for the Solemnity of the Assumption at 6.30 a.m., 8 a.m., and 6 p.m. We also have a school mass during the day for school families and school children and teachers, but that will pretty much fill up the church. So that's the official. Tomorrow evening, right after the 6 o'clock mass, the Tuesday uh, prayer group, the monthly Tuesday prayer group, will have a meeting in the back of church for praise and worship right after the 6 o'clock mass tomorrow evening. Everyone is invited. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, singing the Lord of Souls. Amen. Please join me in singing our processional hymn, Hail, Holy Queen. <coughs> Number 784 in the gathering hymn, 784, Hail, Holy Queen, verses 1 and 2. Hail, Holy Queen, and from above, O Marina, Hail, Queen of mercy and of love, O Marina, triumph of each error in, sing with us. Hey. 